Amen. Amen. And the scribes and the Pharisees interrupts his teaching. How many times have you been in the midst of a Christian educational class or service like today? And here comes an intruder, an interrupter. The devil trying to block the teachings of Jesus. Now sometimes the interrupter is not as bold as the Pharisees and scribes were by bringing in all of this drama. Sometimes he comes in through a text message. Yeah. Or you might just be playing a game on your phone. Are we in the house? You know why I know I'm in the house? This is God's message. And I'm his servant. Or your mind is totally somewhere else. It's an interrupter. It's, a, it's the devil. It may be somebody whispering to you. Girl, what we doing after we get out of church? We going over your house. What you cook? Did you cook? What about some greens? An interrupter. Trying to block the teachings of Jesus. Amen? Now, now, now look, what this, this is what they did. They bought this woman. And this is what they said to him in verse 4. They said, Master, this woman was taken in adultery. In the very act. Now think about that. In the very act. Now, sounds like a setup. How you know somebody committed adultery? How you know? You done told somebody you're trying to set them up. You're trying to set them up. But, we, but that's another sermon. <laughs> But look what they said. They said, now Moses, now these are Pharisees and, 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 and uh, scribes. They said, Moses in the law commanded us that, that such should be stoned. Stoned. Anybody been hit by a rock? I have when I was a kid. It hurts. And it was just one. We're talking about stoned. We're talking about not boulders. Well, we're talking about a hefty rock, a stone. And they were going to stone her to death. Then he then they said, now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. What says that? Let's bring me to my first point. This sinful woman. She's a sinful woman. She's on public display. And according to the charges, she was caught in the very act of adultery. Now, there, there, there seems to be no question about her guilt. She's guilty. Right? She's guilty. She offers no defense at all. She was caught in the act of adultery. Now, that's a sin. True enough, right? This is a sin. Amen. But, but, but the, the point of the Pharisees and the scribes, they thought about, they talked about the law. So th this is what James 2 and 10 says about the law. It says, for so whoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Amen. So see, the law was not designed for salvistic purposes. It was only designed to see you, to see where your shortcomings were. Amen? Amen? So in other words, if you broke one law, if you told a lie, you broke all of them. Amen. All of them. So it wasn't designed for us to keep, because can't nobody keep them. Amen? amen. Y'all, everybody should have said amen on that one. Amen. 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 That's why Jesus came. Amen? amen? Now, the word of God reminds us that we are all sinners. There is none righteous, no, not one. Amen. So turn to your neighbor and say, that includes you. That includes you. Thank you. Somebody tell me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, now, they point out her sin. They knew what the Levitical law stated, that such should be stoned. Why would they bring her to Jesus? Just go stone the woman. Make you think that much. We're going to get into that. 
She was caught in the act. How would you feel? Y'all knew I was going to get here. <laughs> How would you feel if you were in her place? I got y'all attention. <laughs> Think about that. Not necessarily adultery. I'm talking about her place of being caught in the very act of your sin. Caught. Guess what? We are caught. Because God sees all. Amen. So 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 let's see how how it how it how it affected her. She was ashamed. We see her shame. In their haste to bring this woman to Jesus, her accusers probably didn't give her sufficient time to get properly dressed. Ooh. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. But caught in the very act, I don't think she came willingly. You get caught, you want to go? You're going to be struggling. <laughs> We're not going to say that on the mic, <laughs> However, however, she came, dressed or partially dressed or whatever. She was humiliated by the public accusation and the disclosure of her sin. How would you feel? What if each of us would be caught in the very act of, put, it, put, it, put the underline there, you know, or side eye, whatever, you know how you do on the, on the social media, you know, the side eye, the boldness and the, you know, the crying eyes and the sad faces and the, you know, the emoji. Thank you. Think about that. How would you want others to view us? How would you want people to view you if you're caught in the act? And they bring you to the church, drag you in the middle of down the aisle and say, this was caught in this. Now, the woman didn't say a word because she was guilty. She didn't say a word, but she was humiliated. Sin is a shameful thing. No matter how skillfully, you know, we want to hide the sin, you know, we want to be deceitful, discreet, and all of that. But God sees it. And you know, you know, real. You know, we all have sinned and come short. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Now, Luke 12 and 3 says it this way. Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light. And that which ye have spoken in the ear and clauses shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. Yeah. Now, that's the housetops is talking about social media. Yeah. Think about this woman when she got caught in adultery. If she was in 2016. Somebody had a camera on their phone. Click, click, snap it, or whatever they call it. And then immediately, you know, all you gotta do is put it on message and send it to Facebook immediately. And then it goes viral. That's over a million views. Everybody talking at you. How would you feel? Well, you don't have to get a million views. You only have to get one person. When you talk negatively about your brother and sister in Christ, you are putting them on public display. Come on, somebody say amen now. So what they call in the act? So what? What have you done? Come on now. Come on. This is to help us. This is not, this ain't no shouting sermon. This is a teaching sermon. Amen. Amen. It's to help us to go to grow cr closer to God Amen. and to stop doing some of these ridiculous things. Amen. 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 Oh, you may think it's your lifestyle. Well, I learned this from mama. I learned this from daddy. I learned this from sister. I learned this from brother. So what? Tell them about it too. Help them out. She was on public display. have you committed that you don't want nobody to find out? And all of a sudden it's on Facebook. All of a sudden it's on the news. Not the local news. 
the worldly views. <laughs> yeah, you don't been beat down. That's what you said. <laughs> whatever, whatever. They know about you. They know about your sin. Now this is for everybody. This ain't got no no age limit. This is for the young, old, and middle age, and, and in between. Amen. Everyone can gain from this message because there's a lot in here. Amen? Amen. That's why I'm at, that's why I asked you all at the beginning to be patient with me. Now, they see, well, they necessarily see, we see her sentence. She was guilty. She was guilty. But look what Jesus does in the end. We, I really want you all to, to, to get this. Us. She was guilty. She deserved to die. But guess what? So are we. So are we. We were born in sin, shaping in iniquity. So therefore, this message is to help us to stop downing each other. Amen? Thank you. I got a few hand claps. But it ain't really for me. It's for God's word. Amen? If we truly love each other, like we talking, love ain't no talking game. Love is an action game. Amen? It's a lifestyle. Christianity is a lifestyle. Amen? It's daily. So don't leave out of here talking about Sister Alice was too long. I need y'all should have said amen right there because that would have let me know that y'all ain't going to do that. But that is okay. It truly is okay. <laughs> she deserved to die. But there was one small problem with them bringing her to Jesus. What was the man? overtook her with strength. That's a good, very good point, big brother. Thank you. Amen. But yet and still, he need to be brought to Jesus too. Amen. He need to be brought to Jesus. Now, Leviticus and Deuteronomy speaks about this, this particular sin. Leviticus 20 and 10 and Deuteronomy 22 and 22. I'm going to read Leviticus 20 and 10. And the man that committed adultery with another man's wife, even he that committed adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. So this man already knew what was going to happen, apparently. He got away. But isn't that the way sin does? It overtakes the one that is weak. Amen? Let's not let's let's get strong in the Lord in the power of His might, and let's not consistently stumble and stumble and stumble over the same sin, the same sin, and the same sin over and over and over again. Amen. 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 They were both supposed to die for this sin. Nevertheless, regardless of that, the woman was there. She deserved to die. Nobody gets away with sin. Romans. 6 and 23 says, for the wages of sin is death. We were born in sin, shaping in iniquity. In essence, we all deserve to die. But the gift of God is eternal life. Amen? In an effort to humiliate this woman and to discredit the Lord, they brought her to the best possible place. They brought her to the very man who could deal with her past and her problems and who could make it all right. Now I want to stick a pen right here. Sometimes we look at the past sins of an individual after they accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. After they're in the church, they're working in the church and they're trying to grow in Christ, coming to Sunday school, coming to Bible study, doing the best that they can. But oh my God, 
we got some mouthy people that want to continue to bring up it happened way back then. Way back behind. Way, 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 way back then. But because you got a little inclination of information, you feel like you got the authority to down this brother or this sister. Preach. Well, I can't control y'all. You know, I can't control it. You have to want it to be controlled. Amen. That means you're going to come to Bible study. You're going to come to Sunday school. You're going to read your Bible on the daily. You know, and you're going to pray to God. And guess what? Your lives is going to start to be transformed. Amen. So many times, so many times, We put our mouths on people. Uh -huh. And then when, when someone come to you and say, did you say A, B, C, and D? What do we resort to? Pray the Lord my strength. Well, you know the Lord is working on me. Well, ain't he working on all of us? Is it working on all of us? Come on. What is it going to take for us to finally understand that God is, does not want us to react this way? Amen. They tried to humiliate this woman, discredit the Lord. You know? Now, I want you all to realize that Jesus can handle your problem. <laughs> he can handle your issues. He can handle and deliver you from your shortcomings. From the things that are weak. You know, we got some people that are their weakness is gossiping. That, that, that's all they live for. Girl, did you hear? Girl, what did he say? Oh Lord. What's the what's the what is the what is the 411? Is that the real that's the, what's the what? The tick. What's the T? See, I hadn't heard that, so y'all know I ain't listen to no gospel. I ain't know what that was. What's the T? Everybody know what that is? Oh, that means talk. Oh, now y'all need to catch that whip from that talk. Oh, the sweet tea. I heard that before, but but but, but that was on TV. Y'all need that sweet tea alone. Don't, don't, don't listen too much of that sweet tea because next week you're going to be part of the sweet tea mix. Okay? Now, they were scheming critics. Now, we moving on. They were scheming critics. We all got critics. I got some too. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Scheming critics. They had a plan. These men had it in their heads to put Jesus in a no-win situation. If Jesus simply let the woman go, then he was in trouble with the Jews because he would have been he would have he would be seen as being easy on sin. Amen. If he gave permission for the woman to be killed, stoned, then he was in trouble with the Roman law. So they thought they had him in a catch-22. These religious men are just like us today. They couldn't care less about this woman. They couldn't care less about her sin or her soul or her eternal destiny. In order for us to grow more in God's grace, we got to care about each other. We got to care about the sin that they're in. We got to care about their soul. And we got to care about their eternal destiny. That's why Hebrews 10 and 24, part of it says that we need to provoke one another to love and to good works. See, when you provoke somebody, it ain't always an easy time. But you provoking them to good works. 
provoking them to love. Yeah. Now, provoking, that's a kind of a catchy word. It's kind of an irritant. But if I irritate you to do good work, then I'm doing the will of the Lord. Amen? Amen. 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 And if you are provoking others to do good works, guess what? You're doing God's work. Amen. Your name ain't always going to be <coughs> thumbs up. Amen. Sometimes it's going to be like that. Amen. Some people like it, some people don't. Who cares? Amen. Who cares? Amen. I care about what God thinks of me. Amen. I'm going to be real with you. I'm going to be real with you. I care about what God thinks of me. Amen? Amen. Now, we have to love them. That's the key. We have to love them enough to guide them, to show them, and to help them with their eternal destination. Amen. All the religious leaders cared about was their own warped sense of righteousness. Yeah. It was warped. They thought that was all of that in a bag of chips when it came to righteousness. So they can cast down and talk about anybody else. Things haven't changed that much. All Pharisees are the same. They had a problem. Their plan might have succeeded with an ordinary man, somebody like me or a woman. But they were dealing with Jesus Christ. And he simply refused to play by their rules. Amen. When they tried to stump Jesus, you know, try to trap him, yeah. they discovered that they were no match for yeah. Jesus. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Notice how he responded to their argument. They were ignored. You got to ignore some folks sometimes. Yeah. Not, 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 not to, to, to hurt them. Sometimes it's just like, you know, that Charlie Brown, wah, 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 wah. That's what sometimes this stuff, you know, it sounds like just, Womp, womp, womp. Yeah. It, no, just like that. Yes. It's the same old chatter. They come into you with the same chatter. Chatter, 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 chatter. Get a new subject. Amen. Get a love subject. Amen. All of this gossip down in each other. Get a new subject. Amen. Put your rocks down. Amen. Put your rocks down. Matter of fact, turn to your neighbor and say, drop your rocks. Drop your rocks. <laughs> when, when Jesus ignored them, while they were talking to the Lord, he just knelt down and began to write on the ground. He had no use for their pettiness or lack of love for sinners. Notice that it was a lack of love for sinners. These are wrongdoers. People that hurt you on purpose. Gotta love them. People that talk about you negatively and want to kill you. You gotta love them. Amen? What did Jesus write? We, we really don't know. Maybe he wrote what he said. We don't know. Maybe he wrote... We, we don't know what he wrote. But whatever it was, we know that what he said got their attention. They were exposed. They were exposed. Let's see, what, what, what did Jesus say? Let's go back. What verse is it? What did he say? He that is without sin among you, let him first cast the stone at her. That's all he said to convict them. Amen? Amen. They were exposed now. They realize, hey, we all under the same umbrella. We sinners. <laughs> I can't pick up this stone. Let me drop my rock. Let me drop it. Because I can't throw this at this woman. I was at, I was with this woman last week. Mm. I don't know what their sins were. But they knew. And this is the thing. See, when you are confronted with your sin, and you want Jesus to deliver you from that sin, you have to acknowledge your wrong. Amen? This is what they did. See, Jesus helped everybody. He didn't leave nobody out. He helped the, the, the woman. We're going to get to that. But right now, he helped the accusers. Look at the love that he has. Even the ones that's accusing you. In other words, even the ones that's bringing the wrong to the wrong, or, or bringing a wrong person. They were wrong as well. That's right. 
and they brought him to Jesus. So we can't keep talking negatively about anybody. It don't matter if it's true. Let's get that clear real quick. It don't matter if it's true. Pray for the brother. Pray for the sister. Amen? She was caught in the act. Let's see what Jesus, let's see how Jesus deal with it. Okay? They were exposed. Let's deal with this first. They were exposed. And I'm almost through that. He would thou stand upon your leg of person. Cast the stone at her. Excuse me. At this point, all the shouting came to a stop. And all that could be heard was the dropping of the rocks. Dropping the rocks. They're dropping the rocks. And the shuffling of their sandals as they walked away quietly. Now they came in busting into Sunday school. <laughs> busting into the class. Jesus is teaching. Yeah. Now how rude was that? That was a, well, we'll, we'll deal with that on another, on another sermon. But let's give them credit, as we stated earlier, for the fact that when they saw themselves as they really were, they stopped calling for the death of this woman. Man. Because they, Jesus is the merciful Savior. Amen. 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 He's merciful. He faced her. Let's, look, let's see what happened. When, 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 when they left, when they dropped their rocks, he faced her. When the last rock hit the ground, Jesus stood up and faced this sinful woman. When she faced Jesus, she was facing the ultimate judge. Amen. She had reached a place in her life where it was just her and Jesus. Amen. It will come to that, amen? amen? It always comes to that. When you realize your sin, you know you got to go to God. Amen. You know you got. You know God got to deliver you because you can't deliver yourself. Amen. 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 Now the best thing that they did was brought this woman to Jesus. Amen. So why do we talk negatively about a person? Let's provoke them to good works, even if they are caught in the very act. Amen. Let's provoke them to good works. Amen. 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 Eventually, somewhere, someday, we're all going to have to face Jesus. What we do with him will determine where and how we spend eternity. He forgave her. He forgave her. Now, I, I, I didn't mention this, but my final point was the merciful Savior. Okay? He forgave her. The only one qualified to throw a stone refused to do so. He said, neither do I condemn thee. Jesus dealt with her on the basis of compassion. Have you dealt with people with compassion or with contempt? Mm. That's for a self-eternal inventory. Amen? Amen? With compassion. He said to her, though, go and sin no more. Forgiveness requires faith in Christ. And true faith always involves genuine repentance. Turning away from sin. Jesus is our Savior. He is hard on sin, but gracious to the sinner. <laughs> Hebrews 4, 15 and 16 says, this, For we have not an high priest, which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Anytime we have a sin that is overtaking us, it's a time of need. Amen. And you're just right for Jesus. Amen. You're just right for Jesus. He knows how we are feeling today. He knows what you're feeling today. He knows your struggles. He knows your failures. He loves you so much that he was the sacrificial lamb. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus gave his life on Calvary's hill that you and I might have eternal life. He died on the cross. And he was laid in a barber tomb. But he 
didn't stay there. great enemy is death yes. and he conquered death Amen. because God raised him after the third day morning and he declared all power all power, all power. All power. is given unto him and he's now sitting yes. at the right hand of the father yes. petitioning our prayers yes. he wants us to love yes. unconditionally yes. I've shown you in the message today, the first point was the sinful woman. The second point was the scheming critics. And the last point was the merciful savior. My prayer is that if you fit in the first or the second point, that you will take him to the third point, the merciful Jesus. He is the only one who can deliver you from your sin. May God bless you and keep you is my prayer.